Now we're beginning. Dear colleagues, once again, good afternoon. Allow me to welcome you. My name is Ilina Veronica, I'm Managing Director of the National PPP Center. This meeting is dedicated to presentation of the National Certification of PPP Certification Center, the start of which is planned for 11th of October. Within our meeting framework, we'll tell in detail about the content of the program and explain what's the difference of the PPP specialist training difference and ask the question how increase the chances for successful passing of the exam to make our meeting the most productive. We organized TV Bridge, Moscow, London, with Richard Farrow, Executive Director of APMG International, and Sergei Samolis, General Director of the company PP3 Eurasia. Colleagues, before we start discussion, I'd like to say a few words about National PPP Center. National PPP Center is created in 2009 and now is leading expert organization on engagement of investments into the public-private partnership in Russia. Important to know that the National PPP Center, acknowledged by the World Bank, as the National PPP Development Institute in Russia, four major directions of operations. And I'll say a few words about every direction. Expert analytical provisioning of the market in terms of realization of the complex research of the projects and analytical research, assistance in launching of the projects, assistance to preparation, and assistance in raising finances. And the third direction, is building communication between the market of PPP participants and conducting of the business events dedicated to the infrastructure development. And the fourth direction is development of competences, formation of HR reserve and educational programs in the regions of Russia. I told you about the center. I'd like to switch to the discussion of the program. I give the floor to Richard, executive director of APMG International. Richard, you're welcome. Thank you very much, Veronica, and very, very many thanks for inviting me to join the conference today. I'd also like to say thank you to everybody who has joined to participate in this conference for finding the time to, to share with us some of the thoughts around uh, PPP. I think it's fair to say that with the vast amount of infrastructure development required globally, the public sector, regardless of country, will struggle to fund that without the support of private sector and private investors. So I think the PPP program is even more important now than, than when it was conceived about six or seven years ago. Could you move to the next slide, please? So the CCP program we got involved in this in about 2015. And interesting to hear that Veronica has been running PPP programs in Russia since 2009. So she has a longer track record in PPP than I do. So it's always good to, to find another experienced professional. The PPP program was, was conceived by the World Bank. And interestingly, at the time when we were invited to develop this program, through a competitive tender, um, there was a lot of guidance around. So people knew about PPPs, but the thing that seemed to be the problem was the lack of a common approach or the lack of a common language, that people would talk about them, but did, you re did they really understand each other and could they share their same thoughts? So the concept of it was to improve the performance of professionals, to make sure the people who were running the program could run them more effectively and clearly could deliver more successful projects. So the number of projects that are needed to meet the UN sustainability goals continues to grow. And as I said earlier, they simply couldn't be delivered without a strong relationship between the public and the private sector through all stages of the project life cycle. So it's very critical, I think, that the world becomes much better at and more used to that public-private relationship to deliver these very, very 
important and larger undertakings. Could we move to the next slide? So the, there were a lot of supporters for the development of the program. Um, so as you can see on the slide, the majority of the international development banks, the local development banks, under the leadership of PF, came together to support and fund the product project and to support the project. Um, and our task in this was to bring everything together to make sure we could um, deliver the products that were necessary to roll out a global program. But a little bit about APM Group. Could you move to the next slide? Um, APM Group was established in 1993 and we the business has grown. So we have representation around the world in 12 countries. Unfortunately, we do not have an office in Russia, but hopefully the work that we do with the PPP unit will bring some of our ideas and clearly this product to, uh, to Russia. Um, we're trying to move into a more digital world. We were doing this before COVID reached, hit us. So we are working as far as we can with online. We are accredited by our national accreditation service, UCAS in accordance with um, two ISO standards, which are set to ensure that um, the quality of what we do and the quality of the people we work with is as high as it possibly can be. We work in a range of, of products and we offer a range of qualifications. The information is available on our website and I don't think I need to go through every item that I have on my slide, but to say that our main focus in life is around the development of best practice in a way that organizations and individuals can benefit from it. And included in that uh, would be qualifications to enable people not only to learn about a best practice, but also to demonstrate to their colleagues, to their peers, that they are knowledgeable and therefore should be more confident and indeed more competent in applying it. And clearly what we try to do as we are in a government's role is to be very open, to be very transparent, to be very clear about what those standards are and how they should be applied. Could you move to the next slide? This is just an example of the organizations that we work with. So within APMG, we do not develop best practice for APMG. We develop best practice on behalf of other organizations where we work with them to take their ideas and I suppose distill them down into some good advice on training, and then from that train in some qualifications. Along with the World Bank that is mentioned, probably the other important project that we have released recently is with the Global Center of Adaptation, which is based in the Netherlands, but is also funded by international organizations. And last week, they released guidance on sustainability, infrastructure sustainability linked to PPP programs. So there is a huge amount of information and guidance now being distributed by these international global organizations tying together the difficult problems of sustainability and climate change and showing how they work within a PPP framework. Could we move on? The next, thank you. So, you know, CCP program is there to improve the capability that is necessary to de deliver things successfully. As I said earlier, one of the bedrocks of it is common language, common terminology. 
and I don't think I can stress this enough, that unless everybody in the room, everybody working on the project understands what the other people are talking about, it becomes very, very difficult to build that coherent team. So at the, um, <clears throat> at the base of what the program is about is this common terms, common understanding for everybody who's working in the project. It's no longer enough that the senior people understand what is going on and the people who are left to execute the activities are in, in a state of uncertainty. And this is the same for all best practice. It's not just PPP, but it's that, that deep understanding of what uh, the project is about and the way we're going to execute it that becomes so important. And if you have that understanding through the project life cycle, and especially at the init initiation stage, at the definition stage, then clearly you can have a portfolio of better projects, or if you like, more bankable product projects, projects that are going to attract the funding that you need in order to execute them. Hopefully it improves performance. I'm sure everybody on this call is aware that globally, our ability to deliver successful projects is poor. Most reports that we read, project success rate is between 30% and 50%. Yeah, it's no different if it's a PPP, PPP project, in my view, as if it's a normal project. So whatever we can do as a profession, whatever we can do as a community to improve our capability to deliver successful is going to have a significant impact on the way that we can deal with some of these huge problems the world's facing in terms of global, global sorry, in terms of climate change, sustainability and better infrastructure for for everybody and hopefully PPPs will assist in that in a large degree. Could we move to the next slide please? So the, this one of the first products that we created as APMG <clears throat> was the uh, PPP guide. Now, the guide is available on our website. It's free to download. Some chapters have been translated into Russian, and I will leave Sergi to talk about that later. Um, over 100,000 people globally have actually downloaded part or all of the guide to, to get an understanding of what it is about. And you can see there are eight sections of the guide that run through the overview and basic understanding of what it is about, and then through the various stages of the PPP project lifecycle to finally the completion and handing over the asset um, back to the asset owner. So, yeah, it is there for people to see. And I say later, I think Sergey will explain what parts have been translated. Could we move to the next slide? <clears throat> we then developed a qualification program. <clears throat> and <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. As you can see on the diagram, it really has um, three elements. There's the foundation exam, the preparation exam and the execution exam. There's then a fourth element, which is the professional accolade for anybody who takes the training program and achieves the three qualifications. So the three qualifications, really the foundation I come back to is this basic understanding. It's for everybody who is associated with the uh, PPP projects. The preparation um, course and exam is the front end of the project. This is where it's necessary to make sure that we're doing the right project and that people fully understand and think through the options, that the financing is, is available, 
that the business case has been completed, that indeed it is a worthwhile and fundable project. Personally, I think we do not spend enough time generally on making sure that we're doing the right thing. So I think this is a very crucial part of, of the program. And then the execution is once uh, the work starts, if you like the traditional stages of a project, when um, various con contracts are let and the work gets underway. So it, it comes together as, as the whole program and it is suitable, as I've said before, for both the public and the private sector that engaged in the project. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a huge benefit if it was possible for the combined team to do some of those early workshops and maybe some of that training to start a project to make sure they have strong team cohesion and a willingness and an ability to work together for the common good. Can we move on, please? Um, we have translated um, the foundation course and certain elements of the, of the guide into different languages. And you can see on the screen the, uh, the progress since um, 2018 of the translations in different languages. I think there's only three languages <clears throat> um, where everything has been translated or all three qualifications have been translated. There's English, there's Russian, and there's Chinese. So <clears throat> it's great to be talking to people where all three products are available in your own working language. Um, moving on. So, you know, the examination has been available since um, 2017. And you can see that even with um, <clears throat> the issues with COVID around, you know, 2020, um, 2019, 2020, and still into 2021, we have seen um, steady growth in a number of people taking the exams around the world. <clears throat> you know, now, 8,500 people with a qualification or 8,500 exams that have been set. So probably around <clears throat> five to 6,000 people that have taken all three exams, maybe you know, something like that probably, who have taken these, no, five to 6,000 people will have taken the foundation course, and then there will be a number of those would have taken the a preparation and the execution exam. So this is total number of exams that have been awarded. But it's a huge increase and improvement on where it was before we started, with very few people globally holding a generic PPP qualification that was available in multiple languages and also available throughout the world in a variety of training um, training approaches and from training partners. Could we move on? I think as, as I said earlier, um, because the um, program is supported by the World Bank and is supported by you know, the funding organizations whose motivation is to uh, share and, uh, and make knowledge and make information available to as many people as possible. There are some free products on our website. So as I said earlier, there is a free um, guide. There is also a self-learning, a basic training course at the foundation level that is, that is available. Um, there are quite a lot of blogs and news releases for the PPP community. There's an ability to find training companies but are clearly here today, we're talking to one of the training companies who's able to deliver in the Russian language as well as the English language. I think Sergei is probably the only one, there may be one other. Um, there is some um, sort of practice exams and a newsletter as well. And then you can see the digital badges that are awarded. And if you look on LinkedIn and you look on social media, you will see more and more of these digital badges as people gain the qualification and want to share their successes. 
with their peers and with their colleagues. Thank you very much for listening to me. Ричард, большое спасибо за вашу презентацию. У меня uh, несколько вопросов. Коллеги, мы подготовили вопросы к нашим спикерам. Если у вас есть вопросы... Ричард, thank you very much. We prepared questions for the colleagues. I see a list of questions. We'll ask them for sure. First of all, I'd like to Richard to talk with questions. Richard, tell what's the role of APMG in promotion of the CPP programs? I think the uh, our main role is around governance, um, where we look after the um, the quality of the training companies, the quality of the training material, and indeed the um, the quality of the exam, and we award the certificates. Um, we manage the translations, and we work and report to the World Bank in terms of the um, examination questions, the take up, the growth of the program globally. So one of governance, I think. Also, I'd like to note that the guide is in three languages, Russian, Chinese and English, which explain what Russian language is in top three languages why you translated the guideline into russian i think it's because there is support um it's probably because of you veronica it's when there is an organization that is very keen to make sure as many people as possible um, who want to learn about the guide at all levels of their career and indeed through all stages of life cycle, are willing to support it. And we were fortunate being able to work with Sergi to actually get it done. But I think it's um, because probably of the commitment that you have to making sure it's as widely available as possible. Veronica, can I add some words regarding this point? Translation into Russian was ordered by the World Grab Bank Group and I see they identify the demand, first of all, for the foundation level, level one, and the first type of market for the application of this course. It was Middle Asia, Central Asia, that was Uzbekistan, then Kyrgyzstan, then Ukraine, and the response that this program found in those countries it uh, practically demanded to translate the second and the third volume till the end because of those who started this program they were asking they were begging the owners of the scheme i mean world bank to allow to study in russian so we really appreciate world bank and the sponsors that uh, financed this translation. Thank you. I have last question to Richard. What do you think? What is the goal of CP3P, successful exam passing, or additional advantages to the participants of exams and programs? I think that's a very difficult question. I think it comes in several parts. Um, I think everybody um, benefits by greater understanding. So one of the key things is, is to really understand what are PPPs and how can they add value. I think the exam is a great motivator. Yeah. We don't like to go on any training course and fail a test at the end of it. So I think the exam motivates people to really learn deeply and to concentrate on the training course. The digital badge allows them to share that with, um, with their colleagues. But I think most important of all, the organization they work, work for then knows that they are competent and they know they're knowledgeable. But unless they're able to apply their knowledge back 
after the training course, then I think there is little to be gained. So I think it is a partnership between their employer and the individual to learn about PPP and then to apply what they've learned for the good of their organization. To continue the chat questions, it adds my question. It seems that it concerns all the members of the conference. Is the certification compulsory or voluntarily? Are there any organizations and the legislation limitations or international limitations against those who don't have certification? Question to Richard, partially, and to Sergey. First of all, to Sergey. So is it Ричард, может быть, если хотите, Richard, может быть, вы начнете. You да, wish, you can start. Я, я поддержу. And I'll support your speech. <laughs> it, it is not mandatory. So the qualifications are voluntary. Um, nobody could mandate that you have to go on a training course to get a qualification to work on a PPP project. Um, I think it is desirable. And I think that um, my, my main point would be, if you all go on the training course and you all share that common language, then your project will be better for it. But it certainly is not mandatory. But peer pressure may over time separate the people that have taken the trouble to understand and to learn from those people that have yet to understand and learn. And therefore, the people with that learning may well be given preference. On my side, I'd like to say that in the concept of compulsory and non-compulsory, as Rich said, mandatory is not in the sense as you cannot in London be taxi black cab driver if you don't pass exam exam on skills of driving and city knowledge you can work on ppp without cp3p unquestionably qualification gives knowledge in terms of necessity first of all we know that out of the organizations that were customers of this qualification, at least one Asian Bank of Development declared that since 2022, I mean next year, all projects of PPP that they would support, the criteria is presence of the qualified certified specialists. I think even concrete numbers were presented in the organization that is the state partner, public partner, and conducts the bidding on this team, if they don't have certain number of certified specialists, Asian Bank, as far as I understand, intends not to participate in such case. Secondly, we see that uh, some place in news, financial institutes that are behind this program, they discuss necessity to harmonize their proprietary internal documents and yet many people keep proprietary rules proprietary terminology proprietary attitude towards the stages i think that all of them will switch to the common language and common approach i draw some countries such as indonesia has great market and great number of the trained specialists even last year i think declared that all national pro of PPP will be built upon the platform of the CP3P. In our practical work, we see that in our company, the second direction of operation is consulting. We see that the development institutes declare a tender, tender on projects regarding analytics of organizational structure, analytics of the legislation, first of all, intended to help public bodies. Oftentimes, the criteria, the qualification criteria for consultant is presence of CP3P. 
And on personal level, I had my friends talking to me who work for consulting companies, who are experienced specialists in PPP. They questioned how fast you can become certified specialist, because in many cases, without it, it's impossible to claim the mandate. That's all. Richard Sergey, really last question. Share your opinion experience. What is the impact of CP3P program on countries where it was practiced? Uh, are there any professional certified specialists who impact the quality of the projects of PPP in those countries? Richard? <laughs> um, I think it, it, it depends on whether a country had any experience of PPP before they started or whether it had experience of PPP. I am aware of a couple of small countries where they <clears throat> have adopted PPP um, from scratch. So they have sent some people on the training course and they are building a PPP unit in country because I think they recognize the need to um, get public sector, private sector support for their infrastructure projects. I think for you know, most, um, most countries, I think as Veronica said, I mean, in Russia, you've had a PPP unit in Russia, you've been working on PPP programs for, you know, for many years, well before this program was conceived. And so I think for those countries, it's just part of the evolution that if people are trained in uh, understanding PPP, then the overall knowledge of people increases, the ability for people to recruit increases, the capacity to execute um, complex projects increases, and so on. So I don't think there is any definitive research that I've seen where a country has sort of really demonstrates the difference between using PPP than not using PPP, except possibly in the UK, where we had private um, PFI, which was private funding initiatives that uh, were used to build a vast number of hospitals and social buildings about um, about 15, 20 years ago from memory. And so the, the state was able to, you know, accelerate the development of those institutions, of those buildings, far, far faster than they would have done had it all just been funded from the, uh, the public resources. Some of those projects are now coming to an end where they're being handed back. So the, the concession has, is coming to an end. And so they now have this wonderful problem of how do you hand back a P PFI project or a PPP project from the operator back to the state. But I think Sergey may have more sort of detailed um, information from, from his researches in this area. Yes, thank you, we were lucky. We worked on the market where practice of PPP is quite fresh. It was only beginning in some places and where transformation effect took place in terms of this qualification that is noticeable. We can say that based on the courses we conducted, at least in two countries, for instance, the decision was made on airports, on capital airports, to make them as PPP. I think the information about advantages of PPP that was received by the participants, it was very new. I will not even conceal the fact, like in Kyrgyzstan, we had a course, the first part we lectured, and we participants of our Russian course will see where, as they put through example, we used fundamental for Russian practice Corkwell project. I participated in it well, and private partner shared information. 
based on the story regarding this project, only half of the calls took place. We were asked to make presentation before the airport working group in the state of Kyrgyzstan. When we came for the second part, we were invited to meet with Prime Minister and Minister of Transport and all working group on airports. For one hour, we were talking about this project. We answered the questions. As I understand, under the influence of this meeting, there was additional argumentation that um, allowed for Kyrgyzstan to make decision to structure the program as PPP. It was mental transformation effect. We see it in every country where we operate. Like in Kazakhstan, where we started to teach much more advanced practice, and we know that this is also beneficial to learn that, that oftentimes you have empirical approach. So this is the distribution of forces, force of the state, this is qualification of private partner, this is the financial market capacity, and you can turn around and look back and see what's going on in the world. And not what is the average, but rather what's the best practice. It was interesting for the participants. Our first participants practically always BPP agency, the National Center of BPP. In those countries, in more experienced countries, after every session between themselves, the participants discussed how national rules seem to be within the framework of PPP. I think that they draw a summary in terms of the PPP progression further. Sergey, what do you think the PPP Institute in Russia is on the high level, at least? It was believed in 2005. The statute was enacted regarding PPPs during that time. 3,000, I'm talking about PPP contracts, concluded. What do you think? Is there a risk that the program built on international standards and best world practices will be responded by the Russian practitioners? Yes, we're interested how this program will empirically look at it, how it progresses. There is market with deep experience, with great number of the projects, with huge number of professionals. It seems to me, for example, that this would be, or well, first of all, there is a block of people, who, not only on the Russian market, but those who work on different markets, or they see their personal future not within Russian Federation. So international qualification is your personal is your personal improvement of professional rating it doesn't have duration it don't have to renew it 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 is given to you once upon a time and you become international global specialist along with this the knowledge and approach if you don't pass exam you can read this book you should download eight volumes, 150 pages each. During your vacation, you can read it. I think it's worth it. All Russian practitioners know what impulses are development of our practice and what are the realities. You cannot say that all markets, all regulation, regulations, regulators understand each other that the rules accepted in the Russian Federation are interpreted differently. When we interpret those, it is good to know what's on horizon, where, how does it work in the world? What, how do we approach it? What are the instruments that all the world utilizes? It seems if you imagine it, to leave the boundaries, the federal statutes within the framework of those statutes, it seems it's better to look wider and it will be easier to understand where practice will go. 
because in any set of tools will move you to become more universal and offer to the Russian market a toolkit used in the world. In other particular, I'd like to mention out of three levels, we see that there are not so many projects out of those 3,000 at the stage of operation, majority, minimum, sorry, minority and experience accumulated in developing of the projects, carrying out tendering and award-winning ceremony. We see that one of the largest appetite to knowledge, a request for knowledge is the third level, the execution level. How does this work goes on when we teach with the colleague we discuss, we feel that certain things are not yet in Russia, we don't know them yet, and they will clearly will be in Russia in the future. What will be the change of legislation? What is the practice? How working group will be built? Those who evaluate the bids, how the consultations take place, how to work with public, there are many things that uh, in the global practice, as it seems to me, they haven't come to us, they are in this course. Thank you. Colleagues, you have questions you can ask or you can write in the chat. I suggest to switch to the program of discussion. Sergey will ask, thank you very much if you tell about the program, how the Communication with trainers, tell us about the content. I think it's important to talk about the content of the program. So the Richard slide presentation about the structure of the program, it includes three exams. The foundation exam, the, f the basis of exam. This level is the basic and next two exams that professional level exams one of them is called preparation, another is execution. So it's preparation and realization of the project. Full on international qualification, the certified specialist and PPP needs to successfully pass all three exams. The sequence is that at compulsory type, you have to pass foundation. It's prerequisite to passing second and the third level you will not be registered on the third level you can pass at immediately practically it's not very convenient if you mean to pass the exams in completion there are cases when someone misses doesn't get into the training group training cohort yes this eight eight those themes, eight volumes on APMG website, you can download English version, Russian version, free of charge, PDF files in eight volumes set. The first is the basics of PPP. It runs through all topics, all stages. That is, it talks about introduction of what PPP is, about advantages, disadvantages, what are the schemes, what is terminology, what is the framework conditions, how state organizes collaboration with legislation about the regulations, what are the key approaches to risk and finances, and then goes through the cycle. You see that from three to eight is the project cycle. It briefly describes is described in the foundation volume. The second of the exam covers the framework and identification of the project screening, such as acceptability of PPP, and most of the stages of structuring, structuring, exam of the execution, talks about the bidding, completes the structuring, describes the bidding and construction and upper in maintenance. Every, all three levels are three exams. The exams 
are conducted under given conditions online. In principle, the key we conducted live, we conducted live sessions. Physically, we met with all listeners on site. I think this uh, format will be restored and will become a norm even before COVID. We have we had elements of the online mode and it will remain talking about the exams in general the physical on paper is also online version the first exam is 50 questions questions are multiple choice meaning you have to select the right answer to one question out of four variants you select the right one the first level exam is 50 such questions and you are given 40 minutes especially online if you pass you see immediately whether you pass or not exams of the second and third level are substantially different why this level is called professional because for testing of knowledge we use case studies the questions linked to particular projects. The exam is several pages of description of projects, some hypothetical PPP project, about four to five pages dedicated to description, and then go the questions. Majority of those also select the right answer. There are some other formats. During second and third level examination, you will have 80 questions. Exam takes more than two and a half hours. And of course, it's more complex, more intensive, and uh, expectations are deeper. You must not only recall what the book says, you have to apply to the case that is being described. And thus, you confirm your qualification at the execution exam. The same cases are being used, but describing what took place later. You also expected to answer questions related to the case study. You have to answer properly 50% of cases. If you answer 50% of questions properly, you pass the foundation level, the basics of PPP that we run through and about structuring of the program that we offer to you it's got two stages standard method of our operation whether we physically meet or meet online the stage of the standalone work this is the source of the apmg program a person comes to exam needs to read the guidelines Working with a trainer, instructor does not substitute a reading of the book. It must assist. We discuss, we give additional things, we help to focus on character of the exam, on the question. But nothing will replace your standalone learning of the book. So this self-study of the book we conducted 10 courses in the world, after which we, we did some in Russian. After everyone, we made resumes, how to make it easier for the listener, how to make more convenient, to make convenient all stages so you can learn on your own. You've got PDF file that you can print out. We can read online. I recommend to do it. The most diligent group of students in Bangladesh, when agency of the automotive roads projects, when I came to the class, in people's hands, I saw printed out materials, literally crossed by yellow marker. And the class started from the questions immediately. Like they said, that the phrase on the page 19 doesn't correspond to the footnotes on the 19th page. It is the evidence that people are very serious. Some passed 50 questions immediately. It was serious attitude towards working with materials, 
And we can recommend it. Besides, we have a number of the tools for convenience. There is an online presentation with the sound, with voice. There's a text, but the most key, what you need, it doesn't substitute the book reading, but it will help to refresh your knowledge. Passing online tests online, you will also, from topic to topic, pass online themes. Understanding deepens your knowledge. We, as teachers, always online. We work through WhatsApp, the Telegram group. We have very modern online office. It's called the messaging system, the forms, electronic mail. You can ask questions to each other. You can ask trainers, and we believe that two weeks on average is needed for standalone work and the assessment of you do. We give you a timeline. We expect that at a certain point of time, you should read chapter three, chapter five, chapter seven, because some chapters are more intense than others. In completion of the stage of the self-study, we have live conversation divided in two blocks, three days each. We always react at the requests of the listeners, of the customer, how to structure days-wise. The most popular is to study on weekends, or the employers ask, or the employees ask, two training sessions from 10 a.m. till 6 p.m. Moscow time, classes, where we pass these topics, we discuss, very incentivize expression, what did you deal with in the project. We also have surveys in the gaming form. Participants compete with each other in terms of answering properly questions. There are some themes that we believe should be substituted and added by APMG materials. We always face with the situation that expectation of knowledge of the financial themes in our country. We cannot hope that everyone has got basic knowledge of the corporate finance especially project finance. So we give this theme in a deeper way, interesting topics such as risk management, the failure of projects topic with psychological things. This is very lively, very dynamic course. We think you will not be bored if some participants after three courses say it was boring. We believe it's training failure. And you have the right to expect that you will be excited. That's why we have case studies about, uh, we look at this project, the other cases that we use as the example. We've got business game when participants are divided into the teams and there'll be something like the mock-up of the tendering with three stages of negotiations. This is how we work for two times, three days each. At the end, we have trial exam. This is official mock-up test, the APMG mock test that you pass in Russian online. You are given 50 minutes. You test yourself. You know the outcome. You receive right answers and explanation why those answers are right. It tunes you to being familiar with the exam. You can pass this test several times. And further, after you get time for self-study, at that time, you receive from us, we call it quiz marathon, the full list of the test questions you can use to make your palm very flexible. It will help to focus your knowledge and short-term memory. And for example, we meet online by means of Zoom, 
you come to examination platform of APMG, we test, we answer, we look at the correctness of your behavior. At the first level, you must not use any materials. At the second, at the third level, you can use the guidelines. And after this, we hope you successfully pass exam. In just one or two days, you receive momentarily confirmation of your passing or non-passing. In two, one, two, three days, you get certificate. And on our side is everything ready for the second and the third stage and announcement and see how many people passed the first level ready for second and third level. I hope we will progress further and hope that next year on the market together with the National Center will have second and third stage in Russia. We'll see certified specialists in Russia. Yes, yeah, Sergei, that question about the stages of certification. Do you plan to have them in Russian? You answered yes, it is planned for the second and third level of certification on the second and third level. There was a question from the chat. Does the program correspond to the Russian PPP statute? And FZ223 doesn't correspond to international standards. The program is based on international standards. It doesn't correspond in 2020 was special project and ppp it doesn't correspond it's not based on 224 we have separate program that we conduct every year in moscow this is the live program in october this year we get together the cohort if you want to study to the moment of our operation of the facilities you can look at the, in detail within the russian legislation you want to sort out i recommend this program if you want to move into international projects of large infrastructural projects that are realized with involvement of the budget financing and international development institutes. I recommend to look at the program of CP3P. I think it would be right if you plan to move in that direction, in the direction of participation in infrastructural projects with international financial institutions. Yes, I'd like to confirm in some countries which don't have national programs, our customers such as IFC, BRD, ask us to include session or two sessions on national legislation. We discussed with Belarus the question where would the World Bank where the program a separate full day dedicated to local expert reading of lecture because on this market, it's the first experience with people who don't know about PPP at all, they become, they introduce them to the global recommendations and national recommendations. In Russia, there's no analogy such as national center of PPP in terms of the capacity, in terms of power. In order to focus on Russian legislation, uh, it's good to see the programs on Ros Infra, resource we'll discuss what are the realities how does it correspond to the russian realities and your trainers know about this to know russian legislation but this is not a subject of study it's principle enabling approach by the program it talks about so that it talks about universal principles and the best international practices we have a number of the questions in the chat to understand correctly that Preparation to the first level, yeah, once a year. Sergey, we'll talk about the first level. Second and third, I think, in a year. I think next year, not necessarily end of year. On our side, we're quite prompt. We can do everything quickly. Number of the listeners is important. Yes, colleagues, I will say, that coming program that starts on 11th of October, there's limited seats 
no more than 25, the group is formed by 70%. So application deadline since till 5th of October, if you have desire, you can declare it connecting to the National PPP Center of Russia or PPP Academy, or use the link on the website. We can able be able to include you into the cohort. Another question, you talk about case. Polkwa, there's modern project. Are there more modern projects? Obviously, you will use it during your classes. The project is very beneficial for the usage in different countries. Advantage of it, it's got a deep history. It passed stages, uh, deep into exploitation stage, and the refinancing of senior debt, change of the shareholders. We can talk about full cycle of the project. So demonstration purposes, so that theory of APMG management can be illustrated by the projects we use as the case study. It's very lucky and successful in terms of particulars and aspects will refer to fresher projects that are heard by Russian practitioners. And of course, we hope very much that given program, Russian participants will bring with them many illustrations from their practice. I think those who studied with Western programs and with best Russian programs, you know that good se training session is not lecture and everyone writes notes. It's discussion, most of the time interactive. If you switch on clockwork, the good course, 50% is the participants talking, no less than half. With pleasure, we will discuss it with you. Colleagues, if you have any questions, please ask those questions now. No more questions. Once again, the program starts on the 11th of October. It's introductory webinar. Then participants go for self-study with trainer. Self-study is conducted on training platform. You have personal cabinet office, you have access to all materials that will allow you to prepare to the offline sessions on 20th, 20th, 21st of October, for session in Zoom since 10 till 18 p.m. for three days, then short break, another three days for classes in Zoom. That will be live broadcast. You will have consultation, questions asked, you have remote teaching for three days. Exams are planned for the 30th of October. In such mode, in such format, we plan to teach. If you have, if you want to have answered additional questions, you can ask questions now. We have a few minutes left. Hello. Yes, hello. My name is Ivankov Yegor. I represent Salus Group. Question is, there is a statute on, on experimental legal regimes. It's quite fresh. How much this course in the theme of this law? Igor, this course doesn't pursue analysis of national laws. It's, uh, let's see, you pass exam, meaning you know the guideline, the guideline written in 2016 that has got illustrations from practice of different countries. The author selected the illustrations. Unquestionably, during the course, we can react in this very constructive method when we talk. And we say that this global management recommends this guideline. It's really helpful when we discuss it. But entering into the curriculum, some novelties and some fresh items, 
and national conditions was not provided by the program. I'll explain what's the context of the question. The colleague said that if a company don't have certified specialists, so such as Asian bank will not finance the given project. So it happens that new legislative changes that took place in different local countries don't influence. No. The management written in 2016 is the relevant edition. It was not revised. The owner is the World Bank. I think that the World Bank certainly have accumulated observation experience regarding optimization needs, review needs, renewal needs. It's not a question to ask of APMG. When World Bank make decision regarding how to act, we were not informed. So we base our starting point. We understand that one of the escape ways from this situation, Igor, for instance, uh, during that time you have legis legislative acts and realities in life, such as all the questions of ESG, ecological, governance, social, become more important. Some new case studies appeared on the global level. They shook market. One of the escape ways that approach approached by the customers last year based on the request from the World Bank. We composed a regional additional program, CP3P+, it's called PPP Professional Expertise. We read 200 listeners. It is based on the CP3P guide theory. It was a day for financial modeling. There were sessions on risk management. There were cost and benefit analysis, value for money, and half day dedicated to ecological questions and changes of the climate. So there are things, the additional things we're saying that are compatible, compliant with CP3P. And what Richard said, there is certification absolutely new and we learned about it just a week ago regarding climate change. What is degree? For now, it's got facultative addition. World Bank will renew the body of knowledge. Then we clearly, one of the differences of this program is that it's not only international, it provides global recommendations. It's also certified and organizations to receive the right to teach and to every trainer. We pass serious procedure of the certification made by APMG. We have quality control practices. We have assurance of the li professional liability. Our we use standard presentations of what we develop, we certify in APMG. We have clear liability for the fact that we don't fantasize and we teach what is the official body of knowledge. Great. Thank you for your answer. Good day, colleagues. And you too, colleagues. We have one question in the chat regarding certification of the first level given for the certain period of time does it have to be confirmed year after or there is expiration date no other qualifications no confirmation no expiration and no need to renew after several years it's active always at any point of time based on it if you had received first level certification you can apply for the second and the third at any time you please. Colleagues, do you have questions? Colleagues, you have no questions. I suggest to finish 
to wrap up our meeting. Thank you, speakers and participants, for finding time and stay till the end and for asking and clearly listening to the answers and questions. Everyone who is interested in our program, come. Richard, Sergey, thank you very much for participation. Thank you very much. We'll thank see you. you at the course teaching at class. Thank you, colleagues.